sort of uh, is still a fan, you know. Oh, and and she, she, we all are. Yeah, and she found them, you know, before most people knew about them, and yeah. sort of helped promote them, and then chose them to do this thing, which has to be. A well, I got to give them. props to my uh, head of A and R, Allison Jenner. She brought me that first EP as soon as it came out. She had been friends with Joy and John Paul, and uh, we tried to sign them then. They just didn't want a record deal, but we, <laughs> you know, she she knew about them from the beginning. That might be a good transition from going back to your roots in your beginning because you were the ones in the band. Um, you know, talk, talk I hope about you don't have pictures of that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's me with a smiling bee face. You know, talk about how, well, how you first became attached to music, what, what inspired you and how you became so... You know. Well, I don't ever remember a moment when it wasn't there. Um, you know, my dad is still in the business, but he was, uh, he grew up in Connecticut and in 1959 he moved to Los Angeles and started doing record promotion then. And in the 60s he worked for Capitol and Mercury and RCA. <coughs> so I don't ever remember a time when music wasn't in the house. And it just always seemed like something that I was going to be involved with. Obviously for a moment I thought I might be a, a musician, but I, I, I wisened up quickly uh, when I got to Nashville and saw the level of amazing talent that was here. And one thing that was very obvious, you know, growing up in Southern California and being part of that scene, you know, that was more about attitude. And that with that attitude came image. And it wasn't necessarily always about musicianship. When I came here, it was the first time that all the music theory classes that I had taken made sense. It was the first time that I saw what I thought were truly gifted musicians. And I was a good practicing musician, but when you're a practicing musician and you're in the presence of a gifted musician, a bell goes off. It's like, that guy's special. And I, like I said, I was good, but I wasn't a great player. But through that and through my own experience, having music around all the time, being around the business, and being around the musicianship, one thing that kind of happened very organically was I was able to explain the business to musicians. I was able to help them understand why we did certain things. And, you know, what, what we call the return on time investment, ROTI. Why am I doing this? Well, if you do this, there's a reason and there's a goal here. We're not just sending you off to visit a hundred radio stations and hope that it works. Here's what we intend to achieve. I, you know, arrived in Nashville in the 80s, while sort of, the well, this big rock scene that you're talking about was going on. Yeah. And I think Jason one of the, and the Scorchers. Right. And one, and one of the things. REM that, before they got signed. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but one of the things I think you saw in that community was there wasn't a real great sense of business. You know, right. that a lot of those bands could have, could have done a lot better. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes and no. I, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of that that it's rare when it doesn't happen, but the cream usually will rise to the top. There's unfortunate situations. You look back and go, man, that person is so talented. Why didn't that work? But watching R.E.M. in the early 80s, there was nothing that was going to stop them. You know, and the Georgia Satellites, when they would come here before they were signed, it was like seeing the Rolling Stones. It was unbelievable. You were not going to stop them. You know, 